common issues with the live stream number one computer is not showing now i can't quite mimic this because sometimes it just happens and it's outside of your control first thing make sure the computer's on it's always helpful to know if it's coming out the main screen that's a good starting point um, generally what it is is it might be this cable here so this is the computer cable coming in um, so the computer is input number one two three four so here we have one two skip one because we haven't got camera three four so if in doubt you can just pull that out and then you can plug it back in again just at the back literally unplug it and then plug it back in you'll find that nine times out of ten that's actually going to fix it and then it just reloads um, it will affect your main screen so just bear that in mind if you do this mid-service the whole main screen is going to stuff up you might have to go off air on proclaim and then back on air just to make the screen uh, resolution and all of that readjust again so that is issue number one computer not coming through uh, pretty much just check this cable um, it just got, runs just around the back straight into the back of the iMac and it's just another monitor that comes off of here common issue number two <gasps> there's no scheduled streams now in this case there is uh, so there's a 9 a.m. service there's a 10:45 and a 6 p.m. but um, say you've rocked up one morning and this screen is blank you've refreshed it there's nothing happening it's very easy to uh, set up a stream um, it just means that someone has forgotten to do it, which is okay because it's very easy to do. You just hit schedule stream up the top right. And again, apologies, I haven't got screen recording software, so we're doing it this way today. Uh, what you can do is each week we just essentially uh, mimic, we, we, we just copy um, uh, a template from the last week. So say if you had the 1045 service, um, or actually 9am is typically the ones who turn up uh, first thing in the morning and oh no, the services aren't set up. So what you do is you just select last week's one, hit reuse settings. You go through, you change the, change the details of the date, change the details of the passage and uh, all of that and who's speaking. You just scroll down. You can just leave all of those settings as is, just hit next. And then just leave all those settings as is, just hit next. And then here you can set it as private, unlisted or public. All of our streams are public uh, unless otherwise. Uh, unless we otherwise specifically choose not to. And then you just schedule for when you want to start. So in this case, you're going to be starting at 9 a.m. on that time, and then you just go through. You can still start the stream regardless, even if you get this wrong. It just means it'll show as upcoming at a weird time. And then you hit done. And then uh, I'm not going to click it because I don't want to make this one. Um, but then that has created the stream, and you can go in, and it will... I'm just going to cancel. It'll appear in the list here, but it will just take you straight to the streaming page. So you just click on that, then you go, then away, you hit on air, just up the top right. Common, common issue number three is one of the cameras is not working. Basically how the cameras work is they are a long HDMI cable that go out to each camera. So they run from this desk and they run around and they go up to the cameras. So I'm just going to grab the ladder and I'll show you um, what is up above each camera. So this is our first camera. What's up above it, just so you know uh, what cables are there, just things to check. Um, but the first thing to check if the cameras aren't working is just to go around. This is the power for the two cameras. There is the red one and the yellow one. Just check that this power board is still intact um, and nothing has been yanked out. It's not ideal, but that's what we've got. Um, someone is welcome to rearrange it and tidy all of this up in their spare time if they would like to. So I've just got the ladder and I'm going to hop up to camera number two that we have just up here. So welcome to up high with uh, camera two and you get to see all of the mess and storage that we have here. What we have here is we have the HDMI cable which goes into the back. Uh, the other end of this goes in straight into the back of the console, um, the live stream console. This uh, is a powered device. This is just like a, a HDMI splitter or like a, what do you call it, a booster, sorry, just to boost the signal because the camera output isn't quite strong enough to make it all the way down to the desk. So this is just boosting the signal. Uh, out of here, we go to the live stream console. Into here is from the camera, which is this cable, and this is just power, which needs to be plugged into this power board. In this power board, we have camera power, which just runs straight up into the battery compartment here. It's just like a little fake battery pack on this camera, um, rather than a actual batteries. It's just a little power feed. And then the other end just goes into that one there. So power for that, power for the camera. Um, and then in the side here is HDMI, which is where it plugs into the camera. Settings on the camera to check. This is what setting 
you want it to be on the top. You want it on SCN. Let me just try and focus that. SCN is the setting that we want. And then we also want the camera to be set to on as well. Uh, sorry, let me just flip the camera around. Actually, I found one of the best ways to diagnose this one is pull out the HDMI cable and it actually has a screen just around the back here. And then you can flip that out and then, well, you can see me in the camera at the moment, but then you can actually diagnose. So right now this camera's on and you can set up the shot, you can do whatever, and then once you're done, flip that screen around and it will be uh, complete and you can plug it in. And the signal should, be, if provided all this is power, which it does, power, power, plug it in, you should be getting a signal on camera two back down at the desk. The way that you focus this camera, there's a manual focus just on the front here, and then the zoom is just using that uh, as well. We have put it on autofocus, but there's just issues. If someone tall is in the audience, um, then it will actually focus on them rather than on the stage. So that is not what you want. Um, so yes, the settings being SCN, and then also just around here, uh, we want this set to being on video as well. Sorry, aware you probably couldn't see that. So just this setting here, uh, you want it to be set on video. And this screen will turn on if you pull out the HDMI port just there. So that's about it for camera two. Typically the main thing with this one is um, it is also used as one of our cameras that we take uh, photos with at events and that. So sometimes it is taken down, so it loses orientation, all the settings are changed. And then when it's put back up, not all those settings are put back in correctly. So put it on SCN and also just make sure it's flicked over to that video mode. Um, and then you should be pretty good to go. And if, if in doubt, um, if something's showing on the screen that you're not sure what it is, just look up the camera manual. This is a Canon, Canon EOS ADD, a very common model of camera. There are plenty of videos out there which will show you how to do every tip and trick under the sun. Now we're gonna go to camera number one. And here we are at camera number one, there's the sound desk. Here is camera number one. You can see me floating through. See, there's two cables here. One is HDMI, one is power. Um, this camera is on. Uh, it, leave it on all the time, because as soon as the power drops, then it's gonna turn off. So you want this, there's a little power button on it. Keep that as on. We'll go up above just to check what's up here. And again, you get to see all of the lovely mess. And I've just pulled the main components out that you need to see. So there is uh, power here, which just runs straight back down to behind the live stream. Uh, sorry, the, near the main desk that plugs into the power board. And there's a, the power board coming off here. One of them is for this HDMI booster again. Then the other one's for the camera. Check that those are plugged in. This is just the camera power supply. So it's literally a cable that runs through down to the camera. This is coming in from the camera, signal from the camera. And then this just boosts the signal for us. It sends it uh, down the other end of this cable is the live stream console. Um, so that's the signal chain, very simple. Uh, not pretty, but it sits up here all the time and it works. Generally, the main things that you wanna check with this camera is just that it's zoomed in enough. Check, um, get a tall person up on stage. Uh, Adrian's a pretty tall person, um, just as a, a reference point so that when they're up there speaking, is their head cut off? Um, do you need to zoom in and out? You don't want too much of the screen showing. So zoomed in enough, but not so much that you can't see uh, the top of their head. So that's all the camera stuff. What I did want to do is just show you the back of the ATEM console, um, just so you know what each input uh, is and what it does. So going into, what we'll go from uh, just the right side. So you can see mic one has this uh, little cable going into it. And what this is, this is the audio that is coming. This cable just goes straight from the uh, little sound mixer. So it comes out of this stereo output and then the cable comes along goes into this little filter, which just stops a bunch of humming happening. So sometimes if only one channel's coming through, um, like say the left channel, but not the right channel, sometimes, you know how just with a, with a headphone jack, if you jiggle the cable a little bit, it's all right. Generally, you shouldn't have to do it, but just give it that little twist, give it that little jiggle, check these connections are tight, because um, sometimes uh, they can just get bumped or loose. So that is uh, from the little mixer where you mix your headphones uh, through. This is camera number one, it's a HDMI input. Camera number two, HDMI input. These cables just run straight up to the cameras, to the little boxes that I was showing you. Uh, we skipped one because we had a third camera at one point. Uh, then uh, input number four, this is straight from the computer. So it just comes along. It literally is this white cable here. 
straight into the back of the computer. We don't use the other four inputs, at least at this stage. Uh, we then have HDMI out one, which is even labeled here. So this says, says on the first one. So this one is just the output, which goes straight to the monitor. So it literally goes from there. And that is the view that you see as the operator. And then the other one, this is our feed, which goes to the parents room and the meeting room. So what that does is it comes along comes out of the back here, runs along, you can follow the cable. It comes into this splitter. Uh, I'm sorry, this signal is also uh, what does the back hall projector over there. So that is the live stream feed. And then, so what happens here is it comes out from the live stream console. This is just a splitter. It goes from one signal to two signals uh, through this box. So this needs power. Um, if you're not getting signals for some reason, just check it has power on it should always have power. And then it comes down, you can follow these two cables. Again, you can follow it down into this lovely cluster of cables. What we have here is the transmitter. And what this does is it takes uh, that signal coming in from the live stream console into this box. Uh, this has power on it. You can see it has a light and this goes to the parents room. And then what it does is it sends it via this cat six cable so it can run a long distance. It plugs into the wall over there where it says parent room. Um, and then there's another one of these boxes in the parent room, uh, which receives the signal, converts it back to HDMI, plugs into the back of the TV. So that's for the parents room. And then what we have for the meeting room, uh, the meeting room also has uh, exactly the same setup. So this is for the meeting room, uh, just sends the live feed there if we need to watch it there. This has power coming into it, again just plugged in over there. There's the HDMI signal coming in, there's a little extra one we'll get to, and then it just sends it out via the CAT6 cable to the meeting room. Another box like this in the meeting room behind the TV on the wall, and you can play it through that. What we also have here uh, is, this is uh, then the signal which comes out. So the signal comes into this box for the meeting room, and then it just spits it straight back out. So it essentially duplicates the signal. Um, and here is a HDMI to VGA converter. It's not pretty, but it does work and we needed to do it on the cheap, so don't go judging too hard. Um, and what this is, this goes all the way over to the back hole projector. So you can follow this cable. Uh, I can't remember how it goes. It goes through there somewhere, uh, joins up with the main cable that goes all the way over to the back hole um, projector. So if the back hole projector isn't uh, receiving a signal from the live stream console, what you wanna do is just check that signal chain from there Bring it over, check this has power, um, check that none of these connections are loose or have gotten bumped, um, and then you should be good to go and you should be receiving a signal over that side. So I've just tucked those back in underneath. Again, they're, they're kind of out of reach. So unless a kid has gotten in here, uh, and in my time, I've had to look at these probably once, maybe twice in the last four years. So they generally just sit there, they work, they do their thing, and we never have to look at them. So. First feed goes out to the monitor, second feed goes out to the parents room, the meeting room and the back hall projector is what that feed is. And that is exactly what you are going to be seeing on the program screen, which will be going out to YouTube at the same time. Uh, the other one is then just this USB, -A, uh, USB sorry, C cable. Um, and that runs along and it goes into the back of this, um, the main computer here. Uh, and that's how we can make any sort of back-end changes to the ATEM console. Um, most people won't know how to, how to do that, nor do we really want you playing with it. Um, but this main software for the ATEM console, you would think it would be on here, but this is such an old iMac, it can't run the software. So it goes over to there, and there is software on there to adjust it. This is the internet. So if there's no light on that, then that is a good indication that there's something wrong with this cable, there's something wrong at the other end of it, there's a network issue, um, and we need to uh, check that side of things. I will show you in just a second uh, the main points to check for the church Wi-Fi if it does happen to go down and there's no network. And then over here is power. So that's the main thing. Um, an issue that I've just mimicked here is the church Wi-Fi going down. So I call this maybe a common live stream problem. Uh, there's generally someone would have noticed it because the internet is down. But in this case, all I've done is I've unplugged the internet cable. And you can see that you've, we've tried to go on air, but it's just flashing. And it's just flashing here too. 
So it's still sending data, but what it's doing is this console is actually just storing it internally. So then once the internet comes, uh, comes back on, then it can actually just push it out to the web. So in this case, we'd be getting no signal from the live stream console uh, shown on YouTube. Um, so what the things that we want to do here, well, first up, I'm just going to plug this back in to the back. But um, this cable, it just runs down here. And this is like the church, uh, a bunch of the church internet. It's worth checking just the power here. Sometimes this can get bumped, um, which means that if this network switch goes off, then it means you're not going to have internet. It takes a few minutes to reboot as well. So you can just check uh, quickly check the connections there. Um, if all of this is on, but you still don't have internet, I'll show you one other spot. And that is where the internet comes into the church. And that is behind the band area. So I'm going to go over there now. And here we are just in the band area. Uh, the way it works, this is the main MBM box that is power and is on, that's good. And this is one of the, uh, sorry, what, the router as well. So internet comes in here for the church and the church office. So like I was saying, if the Wi-Fi has gone down, typically someone else would have noticed before the live stream guide, but you never know. Um, so just check that this power is on, that that box is on, there's lights on it, um, that that box is on, that there is lights on it as well. Um, that is the, probably one of the first starting points to check if we have internet. Uh, if not, you can reboot it as well and just check all the connections. So it runs from here straight over to that switch, which is sitting down behind the computer. And that should hopefully be a bit more of a tech uh, in-depth review. The final thing uh, that I'll just check, uh, sorry, quickly show you is just the ATEM software on here. Um, so I'll show you that as a final item. So just on this computer, like I was saying, there is... Um, a USB-C cable that goes from here and plugs in via USB at the back of this computer. And there is Atom software control. So what this is, um, it's just the software interface to be able to configure this in more detail. Um, generally, we shouldn't have to play with this at all, but um, Andrew Boynton is probably one of the best people to speak with about this. Um, but in case you need to know, um, it is here. The one thing you might need to edit or staff might need to edit or just um, yeah, someone who's a, who's a bit techie is just these media players. You might want to preload something. Um, you maybe have a still image for for some reason that you just want to have sitting here. It might be our series image that's just sitting there as a backup, ready to go. The way that you change those um, is we open up the software. There is connection. If it shows up on here, it means it's connected. Um, it should just connect straight away. We just go to media. And what you can do is you can preload all these media items. So you can see the live streams preloaded there. And literally, it's just a matter of navigating through to whatever photo you want to use. And you just drag it into Media Player 2 here. And um, then it'll just appear straight away over on Media Player 2. And you can just use that photo. Um, otherwise, other detailed settings, I'll leave to those who actually know what they're doing.